Uh, unit three, lesson three. Hey guys, welcome back to Unit 3, Relating to Others, Lesson 3, Communication. Within this lesson, students will be learning to recognize the importance of communication and recognize the ways in which both parties can communicate effectively, such as sending and listening. What exactly is communication? Well, communication is the exchange of information between two or more people. It involves a process of creating and sending messages as well as receiving and interpreting messages. Poor communication can cause confusion, and effective communication enhances relationships. There must be a sender and a receiver for communication to even take place. The sender is required to compose a message and then transmit it to another person. The receiver, on the other hand, must hear or see the message and then interpret slash decode the message. Both must arrive at a shared meaning of the message to be effective. So here's a little graph depicting the basic communication process. The importance of communication skills. Hi, and welcome to this video. In this video, I want to talk to you about the importance of communication skills. Communication skills make a whole world of difference in how you show up in the world and how satisfied you are with life and in life. And I don't say this lightly. Every day, we communicate with other human beings around us. And that includes our family, our spouse and partner, our friends, our peers, our coworkers and colleagues. Now that's a whole lot of people that we interact with on a daily basis. And if we don't know how to communicate and interact with them in ways that are mutually satisfying, then our life becomes restricted just a little bit each time our conversations break down. Just think about it. If your communication was skilled and effective and your conversations productive, what would it mean for your career? Would you be able to get a promotion? Or a raise? How about more or fewer responsibilities? What would skilled conversations be like in meeting and finding your future spouse or partner? How about developing more satisfying relationships with your family, friends, and peers? How would your relationships with all the individuals in your life improve as a result of learning how to master your communication and conversation skills? In fact, without an emphasis on proper communication, on effective communication, our relationships with those individuals that surround our life become just a little bit less valued, perhaps even a little bit less important. So, if you want the relationships that you have to become stronger, strengthen, become important and filled with trust, then it is worth your effort to improve your communication skills. A lot of us, when we think about communication, we know that there is a verbal component to it, as well as a nonverbal component to it. The verbal component is quite obvious, isn't it? And I put that word obvious in quotation marks because in many cases, it's not obvious. Let me explain. According to research done, communication has been categorized into speech acts. One of the ideas of the speech acts is that anything we say in any language falls into one of six different classes of the speech acts. According to Wikipedia, Speech acts are utterances that have performative function in language and communication. That's just a fancy way of saying the speech acts are the way we get things done. To me, the speech acts are kind of like linguistic kung fu. There are only a few moves or speech acts that when taken together as a whole, understood and practiced, can unleash a giant can of whoop ass. Let me list the six speech acts for you. Requests. Offers, promises slash commitments, assertions, assessments, declarations. I explain these speech acts in other videos as part of my life coaching services and also in my online course, Three Steps to Improve Your Communication Skills. 
If you're interested, I invite you to take a peek at the course and the videos on my YouTube channel. As a leadership life coach, one of the most important things that I work with my clients is the emphasis on developing effective Three, communication one. skills. And I find that the best way to mastering communication and becoming an effective communicator is learning about the speech acts. Since there are only six speech acts, learning them all doesn't take much time. But understanding what part of the speech acts you're using in your everyday communication takes a bit more practice. Learning about the speech acts takes care of one portion of daily communication, which is the linguistic intellectual portion. The other two parts of communication are the nonverbal communication skills, which I think tend to be overlooked. In my experience with myself and with my clients, the nonverbal components are the skills that are critical to mastering conversations. So what do we have? Well, we've got the language, which is the speaking and verbal communication part. That's easy. And we also have the nonverbal bit, which is body language. There's also one more part that I want to mention, and that's the nonverbal skill of emotions. These three components of language, body, and emotion constitute the BEL model of communication that I use with my coaching clients. The L part is easy and stands for language and the six speech acts. The E stands for emotion and the B stands for body. The importance of communication skills stands out when you realize the value of working with these three components. And so my work with my clients begins by learning about communication skills via language, the body, and emotion. But to actually understand all these components, we have to use our brain. We have to use our intelligence. The only way that we can share our emotions is through language. The only way that we can describe our physical posture and our physical disposition is through language. And that's why language and understanding communication in an intellectual way is at the heart of understanding how to become a more effective communicator. In my personal life, I've been practicing language, body and emotions for the last few years. And I'll tell you what, I am still practicing and I still make mistakes. However, I am improving and the challenge has been invigorating. This is why I invite you to consider the importance of communication skills as a path toward mastery. It may take many months and years to get proficient at it. By practicing language, by practicing emotion, and by practicing the physical dispositions, I've learned to prevent misunderstandings with the people I interact with on a daily basis. For example, let me talk about the speech act of requests. Through practice, I've learned to become a better requester. I've learned to articulate very clearly what it is that I want from another person, whether it's a meal at a restaurant or watching a movie with friends and so on. Additionally, I've also learned through practice how I can actually declare satisfaction for my requests. This was possible because of the distinctions I made within my conversations and actually separate out language and categorize words and sentences into their respective speech acts. This skill alone helped me greatly with my peers, with my colleagues at work, and most importantly, with my family. I taught these skills to my clients and to my students, and they reported great successes in their conversations and communication with important people in their lives. My clients were able to prevent misunderstandings and strengthened relationships. Some also reported that they were able to relieve stress and increase the confidence they had in themselves. I hope you're able to see how very critical the importance of communication skills are. They cannot be overlooked. It begins with understanding the linguistic component of communication through the speech acts and further refined and honed through the nonverbal communication skills of body language and emotion. I hope this video has been helpful to you. And if you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to share them below. What exactly is the role of the sender of a message? Well, the sender must be skilled in creating an accurate message, which is more clear and involves transmitting words in a manner that ensures clear and accurate interpretations. This involves knowing appropriate vocabulary as well as terminology. There are two types of communication. 
One is nonverbal communication and the other is verbal communication. Verbal communication involves the use of words. This includes when you speak to another person or a group and can also include sending an email, text, or sending a letter where you don't actually have to speak. Nonverbal communication, on the other hand, uses elements other than words to convey a message. These elements may include gestures, touching, eye contact, body movement, or even facial expressions. The tone of your voice can also be a sign of nonverbal communication. For each of the following phrases, emphasize the bolded word. Notice how each message takes a different focus. What do you want me to do? 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 What exactly does body language have to do with communication? Well, a great deal of feelings can be revealed through body language. It is a form of nonverbal communication. For example, sitting slouched on a chair staring into nowhere while somebody is talking to you can demonstrate boredom. And this can often happen without planning. Some people just transform in their minds, and when body language does not reflect feelings, it can send mixed messages. Some tips for sending effective messages are to think before you speak. Take into account the points you want to make before speaking. It can save you from embarrassment or hurting others. It's also important to express a positive attitude. Try your best to send a warm and enthusiastic message. Nobody likes complaints or criticisms. However, you can always criticize constructively and respectfully. It's also important to send clear and specific messages. It's to ensure that your thoughts are organized in a meaningful way. Try to use detailed facts to support the point that you're trying to make and use clear language. It's also important to speak clearly. Use words that others will understand. Make sure your pronunciation is correct and don't talk too slowly or quickly. Maintain a healthy, normal pace. It is also very important to be aware of what you're saying. Be aware of all aspects of your communication so that both verbal and nonverbal communication are sending the same message. It's also important to check for listener understanding. Be aware of the listener's body language for information about how your message is being received. Ask for verbal feedback if you have any questions about nonverbal feedback that you are receiving. For example, when you're trying to say something important to someone and they're sitting slouched and looking into the thin air, you can constructively ask them, am I boring you or is there anything I can do to make you listen to what I'm trying to say, for example. Receiving messages, on the other hand, require specific skills. The way that you listen affects the quality of communication. When someone hears your message without taking in the meaning, they are using passive listening. Silence is often frustrating. You do not know if the message was received accurately, and you frequently miss the purpose or the value of the message as a whole. Rather than passive listening, active listening can enhance other aspects of your life. It can allow you to gather more information about your world, such as greater knowledge about your environment, current events, as well as people around you. It's important to listen attentively, and it increases the tools that you have to ensure clear communication. Active listening also promotes good relationships. People feel valued and understood when they are being listened to attentively. Acknowledgement enhances relationships and it provides a solid foundation for caring relationships. It's important to focus on others and be less self-involved. It allows you to practice empathy. You can also grow as a person and appreciate differences. Even if you're bored, you have to fake it till you make it. Active listening can also show your interest in others. When interest is shown, the speaker feels as if they are of interest. 
when people are made to be felt worthwhile, it can boost their self-esteem extremely. And it involves concentrating on what is being said, to understand and remember the message. Providing feedback can clarify understanding. How to be a better listener includes concentrating. Focus only on what the person is saying. Eliminate distractions wherever possible and stay in the present and do not think ahead to what your response will be. If you are lost in what the person is saying, you can ask for clarification. It's also important to listen with a purpose. Recognize the reason for the communication in the first place. Your friend may be telling you about problems just so that they can have someone else listen to them. It's also very crucial to keep an open mind. You must be prepared to accept and honor the other person's point of view. You must be able to connect to the speaker. Make some eye contact. Lean towards the speaker. Keep facial expressions open and interested to encourage the flow of information. It's also crucial to interpret the message after it's been conveyed. Use the feedback mechanisms of active listening that we've gone over before. Keep your own ideas and feelings about the speaker from getting in the way. And it's also important not to interrupt the speaker. Sometimes it is tempting to interrupt people who sound like idiots, but inter interruptions can confuse the speaker. It is always essential to be positive. Assume a positive attitude in your role as the listener. It will help keep you and the speaker motivated throughout the communication process. This also includes controlling your emotions. If what you hear affects you emotionally, stay calm and continue listening to the speaker. You can then express your views and feelings after hearing the message with an open mind. Always think before you speak. I will now have you guys complete this Lesson 3 quiz.